do we have champagne for breakfast on a school day? Come on, I'm about to win the biggest case of my career. I think it deserves a little bit of the bubbly. Don't you think you're jumping the sentence a little bit? How do you know the jury won't believe Pamela's story about the other mysterious man? Because I'm going to nail Mason's mama to the wall. She's going to be sorry she ever left the bottom of the East River. You really think you have what you need to do, Pat? I really do. Well, you must be very excited. Hi. I'm feeling like a master of a keto. <laughs> I think those dogs are so weird, don't you? The dogs. A keto's, I mean, they're too big and they've got those tails that curl up so you can a see. Keto, a keto? That's a keto's. A keto's. Oh. The dogs are a keto's, you bimbo. I'm talking about a keto. That's a power, your ability to, to rechannel your opponent's energy and direct it against them, you know? <laughs> As much as I'd like to see it, I don't think that judge is going to let you punch out Mason. Sweetheart, I don't have to punch him. I'm going to use a star witness's words to crucify my steel. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to miss it. You see, I have some things I have to take care Darling, of. Darling, you're going to have to let go of your parking space on State Street. You have a blind date with Justin. I'm sorry, I just can't. Sweetheart, it's engraved. This invitation is a subpoena. See you on the witness stand. <laughs> this is driving me crazy. What's wrong now? I know Tim Enns, and he has managed to dredge something up in the past 24 hours. He has called Gina to testify. Now, what do you suppose he's going to do with that? I know. All we can do is just wait and see. Well, what are we supposed to do if, if he asks Gina to introduce new testimony? Well, we'll try to refute it, Julia, but there's no way to anticipate that. You've done everything you could. You've done it well. Thank you. I saw him yesterday. He was cocky, and it wasn't bluster. He and Gina are up to something. And I'm scared about what it is. Yeah, I know how much you're going to miss this place. But I will try to make the beach house as comfortable as I can. You're in a feisty mood this morning, aren't you? Oh, are you kidding? Feisty isn't the word. When I was laying in bed last night, I could hardly sleep knowing that you were going to be lying there next to me tonight. And I made reservations at the Orient Express so we could have a great celebration dinner. I mean, good food. Darling, I don't think we should be jumping the gun on this, you know? Mason says when you're acquitted, you're a free man. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but uh, I haven't been acquitted yet. But you will be this afternoon. Was there something you're not telling me, something I should know? No, you know everything I know, but I don't think either one of us can afford to forget the way this trial has gone. There's no reason whatsoever to be certain of the outcome until it actually happens. Cruz, I listened to the jury during Pamela's testimony. They're going to find you innocent. Darling, they're going to go into that jury room and deliberate, and they're going to go over every single damning piece of evidence against me. I can't believe you're talking this way. Yeah, well, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm missing something here. Her testimony was favorable, and I think things are better than they have been, but I've known Keith Timmons a long time. I think I would be a fool if I let my hopes get up too high. We still have to go through another day of this, and as far as I'm concerned, anything can happen. This isn't going to work, Haley. It's just not. How can I be an actor if I can't remember one line? You will remember. I guarantee it. <sighs> Even if I remember it, I mean, it's, I'm going to be so nervous and uptight about trying to remember them, I'm not going to be convincing to anybody. Oh, come on. You're just exhausted. It's okay. Of course I'm exhausted. I mean, God, I'm a nervous wreck. I mean, I can't remember one line, and we shoot this thing in two days. Two. Two. Two days. Jake, uh, will you please stop pacing the floor and sit down? I can't. Jake, sit. You're driving me wacko. I need to talk to you. Please. Come here. Right. Now listen, you remember when you were studying for your exams to get into college and how you felt you were anxious? Mm -hmm. Well, well, I, I was a little nervous. Maybe. A little nervous? Okay, then how about when you were modeling for the Beast Cologne for the first time? You were just a little nervous? <sighs> Look, I know what you're driving at here. This is different. No, it's not oh, this different. Is different. This no, is. this is the same thing, because whenever you try something new, you get nervous, Jake. But that's okay, everyone does. But see, the thing with you, Mr. Morton, is that you excel in everything you do. You impress everybody, and you have a lot of fun doing it. Now, am I right, or am I right? 
How come you always know what to say to make me feel better? Because I never lie. I tell the truth. Oh, I love the way you tell it. Mm. You know, mm. if you just relax, those words will come pouring out of your mouth. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Good. So how about if I, um, if I make some breakfast mm -hmm. and you, <laughs> you study your lines? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. You know, Mel said he was going to send over a couple of pages to add to the script. <clears throat> you know, that could be the messenger. I'm just, let me just get no. it. No. I'll get it. I'll get this one. Let me. All right. Moment has passed. I'll get the door. No problem. Hello, kitty kids. I'm sorry to barge in you like this, but I need your help. TJ! What can we do for you, buddy? Well, actually, last night I spent the night with Ted and Lakin. I woke up this morning and they were gone. So I tried to fix breakfast myself and just ended up like a big pile of eggs and orange juice on the kitchen floor. <laughs> well, you know, Johnny serves till 11. And there's no way I can drive my van, sweetheart. Believe me, if I had a choice, I wouldn't bother you guys. Oh, man, whatever you guys are cooking tastes real, smells real good. Oh. Uh, what's going on? I said, look, unless Keith comes up with a way to shoot down Pamela's testimony, Cruz should be in pretty good shape. It's the best thing I've heard in a long time. You don't really sound that certain. Well, we could be in for some surprises. What kind of surprises? I don't know, but the way Keith's strutting around, he may have something up his sleeve. Whatever that is, it's your job to beat him. We're counting on it. Yeah. Quite a shocker when Pamela took the witness stand, wasn't it? Gina, I am not discussing this or anything else with you. Oh, who better to dish the first, Mrs. Capwell, than the second and third, Mrs. Capwell? You're the one that brought her to town. No, I'm afraid I can't take credit for that, unfortunately. I mean, the thing that upsets me most is that she's planning to stay in Santa Barbara and make your life hell. I was hoping I could do that myself. I guess I'll just be satisfied to sit back and enjoy. See you inside. What did she say to you? What difference does it make what she ever says? You know, it really amazes me that you could have been married to Gina and Pamela. Not one, but two monsters. I'll be there right now, right. Sophia. Glad you're here. Well, you didn't give me any choice. I'd much prefer not to go on that witness stand again. The DA is entitled to cross-examine you. Why? I've already said everything that happened that night at the Laser Palace. Well, then you have nothing to worry about, Mother. Just relax and answer his questions in a truthful and straightforward manner. I just wish I knew what those questions were going to be. Mother, you've already been through the worst of it. You've revealed yourself to the family, so you have nothing more to worry about. Unless there's something you haven't told me. Now, I know why you're being cautious. But we're going to be together. We've always been together. Sweetheart, every time that we've always thought things were at their darkest, we've always managed to see the light. I am not going to stop fighting I'm, until... I'm not asking you to stop fighting. And I, and I know that we've always found a, a way to be together. Sometimes when I'm sitting here in this cell, I just can't help but w wonder what it would be like if we uh, suddenly couldn't find that light. But that isn't going to happen. Well, I... Never... I'm sorry, man. It's time to go. It's not over. Okay. Anyway, I'll see you in the court. We are going to be together. The state calls as its next witness. Mrs. Capwell. Mrs. Gina DeMott Capwell. Take it easy on me, would you? Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Well, why wouldn't it be? Just answer, I do. I do. Uh, state your name, please. Gina DeMott Capwell. <clears throat> Would it be all right with you if uh, 
to avoid confusion, I addressed you as Ms. DeMott. Sure. And after all, the place is crawling with Mrs. Capwell's. Well, Ms. DeMott, were you once married to C.C. Capwell? Twice. He could never really get over me. No, you see, what I'm interested in here is the fact that you recently met the first Mrs. Capwell, Pamela Pepperidge Capwell Conrad. That's right. Would you please tell the court where and when you met Pamela Capwell? Let's see, it was about a month ago, in her hotel room at the Dewberry Arms. Could you describe the hotel? It's a dump, everybody knows that. And how did you find Pamela Capwell? Well, that's a long story. <laughs> I mean, how did she appear? How, how, how was she dressed? Why didn't you just ask me Would that? Would you a answer the question, please? Well, if you put it that way, and she fit right in at the Dewberry Arms. She had this old wrinkled dress on. It looked like she'd been sleeping in it for about a month. And a severe skin condition. I mean, the lady just wasn't taking care of herself. Did you influence her plans? Or change her plan? Well, yes, I, I managed to convince her to stay. How'd you do that? Well, I dug deep down into my heart, and I told her that I couldn't possibly allow her to leave Santa Barbara without letting her two sons know she was alive. I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm sure that the... Uh, court is impressed with your compassion. Now, uh, after a time, did you notice a change in Pamela Capwell's living conditions? I sure did. A week or two after I first met her, she checks into this fancy schmancy hotel and starts ordering up champagne and the best caviar. Then all of a sudden she's got this closet full of designer dresses and veils. Your Honor, the defense fails to see the relevance of this testimony. Your Honor, if you will indulge the prosecution as you have so often indulged the defense, the relevance of this question will become abundantly clear. You may continue, Mr. Timmons. Ms. DeMott! Did it appear to you that Pamela Catwell came into a lot of money? She sure did. How much money? How well I know how much money. You're under oath. $100,000. How did you know that it was exactly $100,000? I, I don't think I, I want to answer this question. I mean, I, because it, it, might, it might incriminate me. You are not on trial here, Mr. Well, Demar I have Please. rights, don't I? Question. I promise you, Mr. Timmons is not violating your rights. You'd be surprised at the kind of thing he tries Mr. to... Mr. Mark, will you please answer the question? How did you know it was exactly $100,000? Because we had a deal to split everything she got 50-50. I have no further questions. Just, just a moment, Mr. Mark. Does the defense have any questions? Yes, sir. We have, we have no questions at this time, Your Honor. You may step down, Mr. Mark. Why did you do that? Anything else she says could only hurt Pamela's credibility. We can always recall her. Your Honor, the state recalls C.C. Capwell to the state. Thank you for being such a doll and helping me out. I mean, I know you're not my biggest fan. Oh, TJ, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'd help anybody who's in your condition. Right, right. Well, I didn't exactly expect to change your heart, you know? But, um, I don't know, I figured one of these days you might just give me a chance. I give everyone a chance. A chance? <laughs> <laughs> you just think I'm a jerk because all the hustling I do all the time, right? Uh, I mean, what would you rather I do? Oh, I don't know. Work? Work. I work real hard all the stuff I come up with. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's not like I just blew into town and started sponging off Lakin or something, right? <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. How about, um, how about a little more of that orange juice and a couple more pieces of toast? I'm a hungry boy. Anything else? Well, yeah, you could actually make them a little darker this time, maybe trim the crust a little bit. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah, it'd be nice. 
Hey, hold on, that script coming. It's not. I'm not going to remember any of my lines if I hang around here. Jake! Uh, he left. I guess we're making too much noise what? for him. Oh, great. I'm going to have to go. I have to get dressed first. This is wonderful. Whoa, 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 honey, honey, before you go, could you turn the TV on for me? You know how much your daughter loves the defendant, don't you? Yes, Mr. Timmons. They happen to be on the road to getting married. Yes. Well, uh, when I questioned you the night of the murder at the scene of the crime, the Laser Palace, I asked you if Elena Nicholas had any dying words. What did you say? Uh, and uh, I have your statement. If you need your memory refreshed. I said no. No what? I said Elena did not have any dying words. Yeah, when I questioned you in court, you changed your mind and said indeed she did have some final words, and her final words were, Cruz killed me. Why did you lie? Because I don't believe Cruz did kill her. That's why. Because you believed, you wanted to believe that Cruz didn't kill her because you didn't want your, the fiancé of your daughter to be found guilty of murder. Isn't that why you lied? I object, Your Honor. Mr. Capwell has already testified to what he saw. The prosecution is covering grounds. This court has already been over. Sustained. Ah, uh, that's okay. I'll drop it. I was just setting up a point. Mr. Capwell. Did you know that Pamela Capwell was in town before she appeared on the stand? Yes, I did. Mr. Capwell. In the second week of October, did you make a withdrawal of $100,000 from your bank account and label that withdrawal lilacs? Yes. Mr. Capwell. Mr. Capwell. I have no further questions. Ms. Wainwright. I have no further questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Mr. Capwell. Simmons? The state would like to call as its next witness. Mr. Timmons, we're not doing a game show here. Call your witness or rest your case. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The state calls Pamela Capwell Conrad. doesn't have anything to do with Cruz. I mean, they're still going to prove him innocent, aren't they? I hope so. I will remind you, Miss Conrad, that you are still under oath. Miss Conrad, I keep on adding two and two up and getting 100000 Did C.C. Capwell give you $100,000 in cash? Yes. Uh-huh. And this was after Elena Nicholas was murdered? Yes. Why did he give you $100,000? He was paying me to leave Santa Barbara. Excuse me, but my, my powers of perception here tell me that you're actually here. You never left, did you? That's right. Did you give him the money back? No, I did not. Did he ask for the money back? No, he did not. Well, you know, he's an incredibly rich man, C.C. Capwell. I think if he didn't get what he wanted, he'd want a refund, wouldn't you? Objection. That calls for speculation. Please strike that from the record. Isn't the reason that he hasn't asked for his money back because he got exactly what he wanted? No, it is not. He paid you $100,000 to testify that you saw a man running away from the Laser Palace, but you didn't see anyone because you weren't even there, were you? That is not true. You falsely testified here because you needed money, so you helped get Cruz off. Isn't that true? Oh, you that is Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor. I will not hesitate to clear this courtroom of spectators if we do not have silence. No further questions, Your Honor. Miss Wainwright? Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to cross. <laughs> Mrs. Conrad, at any time did you and C.C. Capwell ever discuss the death of Elena Nicholas? No. Did C.C. Capwell have any idea that Elena Nicholas was your daughter? No. Objection, Your Honor. The witness cannot read mine. I will rephrase the question. To your knowledge, Mrs. Conrad, did Mr. Capwell have any idea that Elena Nicholas was your daughter? As I said, no. 
So you didn't discuss Elena or her death. Did you discuss this trial at all with Mr. Capwell? Not in any way. Did Mr. Capwell suggest or offer a bribe to you to testify in this trial? No, he did not. What was the purpose of the $100,000 that he gave you? As I said before, exactly what I said, to keep me out of Santa Barbara. Why did he want to keep you out of Santa Barbara? Because he thought that my presence here might interfere with his current marriage. Oh. You know, I'd like to trade places with you for 20 minutes so you could see what kind of mess you get me into down here. I mean, people see you up here and, and they just color in the blanks any way they want them. They expect me to be charming and witty. Now I'm supposed to be an actor. I mean, young girls see me on the street and, and I know they're thinking about you. And they're addressing me with their eyes. And maybe, maybe you think that's real exciting, but I don't. And I'm tired of being your stand in. <laughs> At least you don't talk back to me. You know, up here with you, at least I got a chance to hear my own thoughts, and that's more than I get down there with my so-called friends. Uh, hey. Hi. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Do you include me in that group of friends? No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Timmons, do you wish to redirect? No, Your Honor, I have no more questions. You may step down, Mr. Conrad. Mr. Timmons, do you have any witnesses you wish to call? No, Your Honor, the prosecution rests. Does the defense wish to call any more witnesses for rebuttal? I beg the court's indulgence. Could we have a moment to confer? Yes, of course, Mr. Kaplan. We have to get a continuance. On what grounds? Your mother lied to us, Mason. Who knows if she lied, lied to us about the identity of the man running from the laser palace. We have to get the truth from her, and then we have to get her back up on the stand. Don't you see how much damage Keith's already done? And he knows he's just picking at the womb. We put it back on the stand, he'll tear it wide open. Mason, you're trying to protect your mother. Now, Julie, I'm expense. telling you, it wouldn't do... Your Honor, mm -hmm. due to revelations and testimony given today, defense requests a continuance. Oh, objection, Your Honor. Save this... your breath, Mr. Timmons. This court will not allow a continuance. But, Your Honor, because... Mr. Castillo has been given due process, and we have already granted numerous delays in this case. Now, does the defense wish to call any more witnesses? No, Your Honor. The defense rests. Hey, hey wait a second. You've got to do something. You can't leave me hanging like this all of a sudden. Sorry, Sorry. We've done everything lunch. we can do. The hell are you going to let me get on the stand? I'll tell those people. Closing arguments. Court stands adjourned. Mr. Timmons, are you prepared to give your closing argument? I am, Your Honor. Proceed. Hi. <coughs> I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm not going to insult your intelligence by trying to pound in points that I've already made. I'll just remind you of the facts. A very beautiful young woman has been murdered. Killed. She's dead. Mr. Capwell has testified that he found Mr. Castillo clutching the murder weapon, the defendant's own gun, over the mortally wounded woman's body. Elena Nicholas's last words were, Cruz killed me. Now, to, to refute all this testimony and all the evidence you've heard of, we have one single witness presented by the defense. This is a woman who received $100,000 from a man who had already lied to protect Mr. Castillo because he was the fiancé of Mr. Capwell's daughter. Now, I, the defense, would want you to see this man as a... Uh, a victim of circumstances. It's a man pursued by a vicious district attorney. You 
seen the animosity here. He attacked me in this courtroom. They want you to see that this man is someone who is sustained by an almost mythical love. I... Uh, you're honest, good, intelligent people. Your judgment shouldn't be clouded. This picture that he's painting for you shouldn't obscure the facts. The decision has to be made on the facts, and the facts will lead you to one decision. And <laughs> I've never been more sure of a verdict in my life. Mr. Castillo is guilty of murder in the first degree. Here? No. No, I came to talk to this guy. Excuse me. Hi. I'm Haley. I, I'm the one that's been defending you this whole time. See, I believe in Jake. And I've told him to go for it, and he has. And if he hadn't, you wouldn't be here. So I hope you're grateful. But I am glad you're here. See, I want you to give him everything he's ever wanted. But you know, lately you've been acting like a stuffed shirt. Wait a minute, I mean, he's not wearing enough. Uh, excuse me. Is it a private conversation? Yeah. Sorry. You know, but I have to say this one thing. It's really bothering me that you're making Jake uncomfortable. And if you keep making him unhappy, then I'm going to see to it personally. You cut right out of the picture. Do I make myself clear? Oh, and one more thing. This thing about coming on to the young girls, knock it off. I mean, you know, I, I know you stand here with innocence and virtue, but see, when I turn my back, I'm no dummy. I know what happens. I think we understand each other. Jealous. You know, he just might. <laughs> I mean, he's got nobody to talk to or care about him. Keep him warm at night. But you do. Yeah, I know. Come on, let's get out of here. I mean, if he hears any more of this, he's going to demand a Haley billboard right across the street from here. Besides, if anybody sees us up here talking to this thing, they're going <laughs> to send the guys with the nets after us. You're right. <laughs> Race your home. The attorney has stated that he has merely presented the facts. But throughout this trial, he has used this courtroom to create an illusion. An illusion in which those facts have been twisted into a fiction. Now, yours is a difficult task. You hold this man's future in your hands. And you cannot allow yourself to be persuaded by an illusion. If you will look beneath the surface of Mr. Timmons' fabrication, you will see a district attorney consumed by hatred and vindictiveness attempting to destroy the life of an innocent man. It is a case in which you as jurors must look behind the picture which has been painted for you. It is a case which must be considered not only with your minds, but with your hearts. And your hearts will tell you that Cruz Castillo is indeed a man faithful in love beyond death. A man provoked beyond endurance by the vengeful and vicious Elena Nicholas, and yet a man so utterly dedicated to our system of justice, he could not take the law into his own hands. Cruz Castillo is a man absolutely incapable of murder. Knowing this, and having heard Pamela Conrad's testimony, is there any one of you who can honestly say he or she has no reasonable doubt as to what happened in the Laser Palace that night? Cruz Castillo did not murder Elena Nicholas. He is an innocent man. His future and his life rest in your hands.
I uh, instruct the jury to begin deliberations immediately. The foreman is to notify the bailiff when you have reached the verdict. The defendant will be returned to his cell and held until the jury has reached its verdict. This court is adjourned. I have a lot of questions to ask you, Daddy. What's that all about? I've had enough this evening. Ah, you're actually turning down a glass of champagne. Are you kidding me? Hey. It's five ninety-five a bottle. What do you care? Yeah, this is the. I just wrapped up the biggest case of my career. You're acting like it's no big deal. You put me on the witness stand and you made me look like a money grubbing bimbo. Well, you are a money grubbing bimbo. So what? You are a perverted deviant. Darling, that's redundant. All deviants are perverted. Well, then it's a perfect description of you. How would you like it if I put you up on the witness stand and started asking you about those red patent leather spikes you like so much? I, I got a reputation. You're telling me. I, what, are, I don't, what are you so hot about? I had to use you to get the pen. Well, your little extravaganza may have cost me my financial arrangement with her. Is that all you care about is money? Yeah. What about justice, dear? You wouldn't know justice if it came up in... Uh, what do you think I was doing in the courtroom this afternoon? Puffing up, strutting about, doing your best to get vengeance against Cruz Castillo and the Capwell family. Well, that may be true, but I was also seeing justice done. There was a lot of evidence against Cruz. You yourself said that you didn't think Cruz was guilty. Darling, that's not the point. I'm the district attorney. It is my job to prosecute and to get a conviction if I can. I am going to win. Mason and Cruz are going to lose. And to these old legal eagle eyes, that's justice, sweetheart. One of the other guys took this off a jerk that used to work in this wing. Thanks. The man was bragging about how he was treating you. I promise you, he won't be back here again. And Cruz, some of the other guys down here, they want, they want you to know that uh, it's not just me that's behind you. You know, that you've always stuck your neck out for us. We appreciate that. We're real sorry about what happened. Man, you have been uh, a godsend through all of this. I really appreciate it. If you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to be alone for a little while. Sure. One break. Just one break. That's all we needed. Yeah. No matter what happens, you took a risk putting your mother on the stand, and I know that that was difficult for you. I took no risk at all. She wanted to do it, and you pushed her into it. It was the right thing to do for Cruz. At least it seemed like the right thing, considering what we knew at the time. You were committed to him. You did a hell of a job. Thanks. Your opening statement was very touching. I'm glad we're such big fans of each other because I don't think anyone else is right now. Not even our own client. Oh, Cruz knows we did our best. Just a little desperate at oh. the end. I can't imagine why. I mean, how bad can a murder conviction be? Let's not have any cynicism from you. I'm the cynical pessimist in this partnership. You're the eternal optimist. Right. Well, it's not over yet. I'm not so sure. The fat lady may have sung. Keith was right. We just didn't have any facts to back up our case. Well, we did the best we could with the facts that we had. That's small consolation to a man who might be facing the gas chamber. One thing I do believe, though, I do believe that my mother saw someone else leaving the Laser Palace that night. And I believe that person could clear Cruz. If he wanted to. If 
only we could have found him. If only. I just don't understand you, Daddy. Were you trying to sabotage the case? Sweetheart, you know I would do anything to help Cruz. I would even lie under oath to protect him. Pamela was the one witness that might have cleared him. Why were you paying her to leave town? You heard her testimony. I had no idea she was even at the Laser Palace. Well, when night. she was revealing that in the courtroom, why didn't you step forward and admit what you'd done? What would you like me to do? Leap up in the air and say I gave this woman $100,000 to get out of town? <gasps> Daddy, I think you could have done something to have made sure that Keith didn't destroy her testimony. Like what? Tell me like what? Talk to who? I thought the best thing to do was to keep quiet. I never thought Keith would believe me if I came forward. I don't even know how he found out about the money anyway. Why were you bribing her to leave town anyway? I wanted the hell out of Santa Barbara. I want, my, I want her away from my family. That's it. I don't believe you. You're afraid of her? You don't know the damage this woman can do. Our family is strong enough to handle the likes of Pamela Conrad. You don't know what she is capable of. Yeah, well, of. maybe I don't. But I do know that you handled the situation the only way you knew how, with money. And because you handled it with money, instead of the support of our family, you may have cost Cruz his freedom. You may have cost him his life. Eden. Eden, please. Why did you lie to me? Well, seeing your father had nothing to do with Cruz or the night that Elena was murdered. You managed to make it look as if it did. Well, how was I to know that Keith T T Timmins would twist everything that I said? I hate Keith Timmins, Mother. But he did what any good prosecutor would do with your testimony under the circumstances. Do you think the jury will end up with a case going against Cruz because of me? That's very possible, but it's too late to do anything about it now. I was so thrilled to see you alive. All the things that we could have done, all the things we missed suddenly seemed possible. I thought with you things would be different. That I'd finally have somebody I could trust. Somebody I could believe in. And trust me, you must believe that. I hate what might happen to Cruz because of me, but I won't let anything, anything take you away from me. Maybe you'll never understand why I kept from you what I did. It was a mistake, and I'm sorry. But you must trust me. Please believe that. I'm your mother. I love you. I love you, Mason, and I need you. I need you to believe in me, please. I do. I'm not sure why, but I do. I spoke to Judge Larson, but she couldn't make an exception for you to see Cruz tonight, so I'm afraid you're going to have to wait and see him tomorrow. I'm sorry. Well, you did your best. It was a good sign that the jury didn't come in right away, wasn't it? It could be. I mean, no matter what Keith said, the jury has to know that he's an honest and gentle man and that his friends and his colleagues testified for him and they said he couldn't kill anybody. can't lose hope. Yeah, I think that the jury was moved by Mason's closing statement. And Ian, even if they, they come to the wrong decision, we still have time to make an appeal. We just need to find that man that ran out of the Laser Palace. You know, I didn't even get to talk to him after the trial. He looks, he looks so beaten when they took him to jail. That's a beautiful ring.
Cruz gave it to me at the gazebo. He was trying to convince me that he loved me no matter what. I mean, I was really foolish to think that the wheelchair really meant a difference. I wasted a lot of time. I mean, I just couldn't tell him that I could marry him. And you know what he said to me? He said, will you just keep it until you can say yes? I wish I would have said yes. I wish I would have said yes. Keep on living our dream. Six and a half years ago, the assassin's bullet that was meant for President Reagan struck another man. It hit White House Press Secretary James Brady in the head. Today, Jim Brady and his wife, Sarah, make their first appearance before a live audience. Stay tuned for the courageous story of his struggle and long-awaited return to the White House. It's a not-to-be-missed event, next on Donahue.